Hi friends, Lindsay here from Diary of a Homeschool Mama. And as promised, I am doing my first weekly update with Moving Beyond the Page. So I want to start this video um, kind of telling you guys how it works because I know that when I was first looking into this, I had a lot of issues with figuring out how the curriculum actually worked. The website can be a little bit confusing um, and the samples they show, they do are, they are generous with samples, but it doesn't give you the full picture of what exactly is going on. So for my son, who's in third grade, we are using the seven to nine package. Um, we are not using every single unit, but we are using the majority of them. Since we started this um, five weeks into our school year, um, there wasn't going to be time to do every unit. So first, it comes with the books you need. Um, this curriculum is considered literature based. However, it's not as literature based as like sunlight or something. It's it doesn't have as many books. It usually comes with one or two books per unit um, to use. So the way it works, let me start here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this book over so that I can show you. So the way it works is there are four concepts a year. Okay. And within those concepts, there are three units or three sections you're going to do. Each section has two units. So you're going to switch off from science to social studies, but there will always be a language arts unit. So for the first one, you have weather and the book tornado for your language arts. Okay. And then for the next one, you have land and Sarah plain and tall. Okay. Now for this particular package, the seven to nine, it does science for the first three units. Then it does social studies for the next three science is two of these and then one social studies. And then we have down here, um, science, social studies and social studies. So for this one in particular, it's not really switching on and off from the two, um, where you're doing science and then social studies. It's doing a couple science and then a couple social studies. Now, from what I've seen in the other packages, the, um, like the eight to 10 and up, it is pretty consistent with, one unit is science, then the next is social studies, and so on and so forth. And then when you get into the higher levels where it's uh, like the 11 to 13 package and the 12 to 14, um, you are doing actually three units at a time where you are covering science, social studies, and language arts all at the same time. I like that this switches off um, mainly because I feel like we can dive deeper into the science or social studies topic without having to worry about trying to get three different units done in a day. So that works for the younger years, I think. And I'm very happy as they get up into middle school that it changes to doing all three. Um, so that is how this is laid out. Um, and this was something I totally did not understand when I first looked into it. So what, the first time I looked into the curriculum, I was just kind of like, okay, this is too overwhelming for me. I'm, I'm not going to even look into this any further. But something kept telling me to look more, and I kept researching, and I finally figured it out and realized that it was actually pretty cool. So for we are not doing these units in order right now because um, – with COVID and everything going on, shipping times are crazy. Curriculum companies are like literally overhauled right now with all of the new COVID homeschoolers, plus all the regular homeschoolers trying to buy curriculum. So everything I ordered from moving beyond the page is back ordered right now, or the shipping is just going to take a really long time. So I did have to find a few units on like eBay, Facebook, and um, Amazon. Um, just to get us going. So we started, we are starting with economic cycles and the family under the bridge. Then after that, I believe we are going to be doing the rainforest unit. Um, and then after that, it'll kind of be up in the air with what comes uh, when it's supposed to and that kind of thing. So this year, we're not going to be able to do them in order. I'm totally fine with that. I think the language arts progresses in order a little bit, but I also think it's okay to do it the way we're doing it, at least just for this school year. 
So the way that this works, like I said, you're either going to have a social studies unit that you're doing or a science one, and then you're going to have the corresponding language arts to go with it. So for economic cycles, the language arts book is The Family Under the Bridge. And if you've never read this story, basically it's about a homeless family who lives under a bridge at Christmas time in France. And it's a really good book so far. And it goes really, really, really well with the economic cycles. So for economic cycles, we are using this book, If You Made a Million. Um, this is a really cute book. It just teaches a lot about um, money, banks, different jobs you can do, um, interest, loans, that kind of thing. So it's a pretty good, pretty good book. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and give you like a brief flip through of just the first section of like the table of contents and everything. So each unit um, takes about three to four weeks. This one is one of the ones that'll take right at three weeks because we school four days a week. Now, next year we want to do five days a week. So the units will take two to three weeks, but we'll have enough units to cover the entire school year next year. So this is the table of contents. Um, they're covering money, jobs. Then this is where we're covering the book, If You Made a Million. Capital and Natural Resources, Producing and Consuming, Supply and Demand, Economics in Your Community, Business and Advertising, and the final project is Becoming an Entrepreneur. Sorry, it's like a circus in my house right now. All these noises, my cats are going crazy, my kids are knocking things over. So, sorry if you're hearing a lot of noises. Um, but... Another thing I really like about this program is that there are final projects for each unit and they're really fun final projects. So I'll cover what the final project is for, for just this one. Um, my son is going to get to basically start his own little business. Now this isn't going to be a business that's going to last long term. This is just a one off thing that we're going to do for his final project. So what he's going to be doing is first he's starting out with testing out some different popcorn recipes that they provide. My son loves popcorn, so I thought this was really cool that it has popcorn um, as the recipes we're going to be doing and what we're going to be selling. So then after he's testing out the recipes, he's going to find the ones he likes the most, and we're going to make a big batch of those, okay? So experimenting with the popcorn flavors... Then we're going to go ahead and do a graph and a survey um, with different family members and friends to see what they, what popcorn flavors they like the best. Um, and then we're going to talk about different ways to market our popcorn, make a profit, and advertise. So basically we're going to be making the labels and all that kind of stuff for the different popcorn that we are going to sell. Um, now we're only going to sell it to like friends and family. We're not going to take it anywhere and try to have like this big thing. Um, like my mom will buy some, uh, my husband's boss, like th that kind of thing. Um, and we're going to sell it for like a dollar or two, you know, it's not going to be anything crazy, but then it goes to selling the popcorn. So I think this is really awesome that they have them do this whole thing. Um, it kind of reminds me of when I did like lemonade stands as a kid but a lot more in depth. Like he's really going to learn about economics through this final project and it's going to be fun. So that is something that I, that really drew me to this curriculum. Um, so that is basically in a nutshell, how moving beyond the page works. Um, if I'm forgetting anything, or if you have any questions, you can definitely leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer them. Like I said, I've been researching this curriculum for, a, for quite a while. So I think I can pretty much answer most questions that people have about it. Um, but now I want to go ahead and get into the updates for week one. So like I said, we're using these two units um, for the next three weeks. We've done the first week and we are absolutely loving it. So we've read a few chapters in The Family Under the Bridge. And this is just a really sweet story, but also very sad. It makes you really think about 
like, what can you do to help someone who's in that situation? Um, so that was one of the things that we got to do this week was make a list of ways that we could help people in this, in this type of situation who have, you know, like poor economic situations or who are homeless. Um, so one of the ideas that we came up with was at Christmas time, we want to basically put together this big meal basket and, um, or a couple of them and find families who are in need of a Christmas meal. And, um, so that's the, the idea that me and my son came up with together along with some other ones, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of flip through to a lesson here and just show you, I'm going to take this page out and just show you kind of how these units work together because you can use them independently um, of each other, but I have found that I really love using them together because they work so perfectly together. So the moving or the, um, the family under the bridge is part of the language arts unit um, but it's just so perfect to go with the economic cycles. So here's a list of common materials. With this unit, there's really not very many. Some of the units have a lot of materials, but, um, they're pretty simple to obtain. So I'm just going to go to lesson one in the economic cycles. It was, we were focused on money. And then go to lesson one in the family under the bridge and kind of show you the way that that they work together so in economic cycles sorry guys we are our first activity is we're talking about the you know what an economic cycle is um, and discussing the way that our family earns money and spends it and that kind of thing. Um, and then we went through and talked about different ways to make money and spend money. Um, we went over, this was one of the sheets that we did for the economic cycle. We talked about, um, you know, how people need a job. They make money from their job. They purchase goods and services, and then they need money again for their needs and wants. So we went over needs and wants. Um, which was a lot of fun and definitely something a child should know. And then there's these different worksheets or activity pages that go with the curriculum. So we went through and he had a weekly budget that he was able to spend. It was $120 and we had to go through and kind of decide like how much would you spend in each area basically. And then the next thing that we did was actually really fun as well. He had to make a grocery list and he had a certain budget that he could spend for the month. So we had to figure out, okay, how much would you spend in a week and be okay? And how much could you spend in a day and be okay? So we got to go through and do this whole shopping thing, um, which he really enjoyed as well. We kind of set up a little like store situation and went through this. So that was our first lesson. And then I'm going to show you the first lesson for the family under the bridge, just so you can kind of see how one day is with this curriculum. And it looks like it's not very much, but it's actually, we probably spent maybe an hour to an hour and a half on each um, lesson in each book. And then we had to read our books as well. So it's definitely a full school day. Um, so this was the first lesson for the family under the bridge, the language arts. Um, so the first activity was talking about the setting, which is Paris, France. And we had to fill out a worksheet. We did not fill out the whole thing. Um, like I said, we're not doing every single activity in the language arts since we still have the good and the beautiful. But we did kind of, we watched some videos on YouTube about different foods in Paris. Um, we talked about the Eiffel Tower. Um, so we did fill out a few things on here. And then we went right into talking about economic cycles and how it pertains to the family we were going to be reading about in this book. So that was fun. And we also talked about wants and needs again. So it, it um... It was really cool to see everything kind of come together. 
So let's see. There was this worksheet for economic cycles where we were kind of talking about things that people, um, you know, what the difference is in wants and needs and things like that. So that was basically our first lesson. We aren't doing the punctuation stuff right now because we have our other curriculum for that. Um, and then we did talk about the theme of the novel. So that was how the first day with this curriculum went. And then moving on to lesson two, um, we had our reading, which was chapter one of the book. Sorry, my cat keeps getting up on the table. It's very distracting. And then we had some questions that we had to answer. You can either do these orally or you can have your kids write it down in a notebook. Um, or actually, the, the units come with the sheets for them to write those down. Um, and then the next thing we did was talk about the different characters in the book after our reading. Um, we went over some different vocabulary, which there were worksheets for all of these things. But for some of it, I chose not to use the worksheet because I don't want it to be super worksheet heavy. Um, so for things that we don't need a worksheet for, I'm not using the worksheet. We're just talking or I'm having him draw something or something like that. I don't feel the need for him to fill out, you know, six worksheets a day or anything crazy um, when we can just discuss what we're talking about. So then we talked about opportunity cost. Um, so it says to discuss the fact that because people have limited resources, they have to make decisions about what to do with their money and time. So we kind of went over the character in the book and how he does not have a job. Um, so he has a lot of time, but he doesn't have any money. He's homeless. And, um, so he has a lot of times to time to do things, but he doesn't have money without a job. So we kind of made a list of the pros and cons of that. And then it moved on to, um, the grammar. So like I said, we're not really doing the grammar for this. And then we switch back over to our economic cycles. And this day I can remember was really, really fun. So we talked about different types of jobs and we had, and we had this little sheet. Um, now the instructions said to cut these out and sort them. We did not do that. I just went through the list and we kind of talked about like what the job entails and would that be something that you could see yourself doing one day? So we kind of checked off the ones that he thought would be a cool job and then we X'd off the ones that he didn't think he would be interested in. So that was the first thing we did. Then after that, we discussed taxes and then we got to do this really fun sheet where he got to talk about his dream job and we got to research everything. Um, he wants to be a video game designer. So we went on the internet on YouTube and found some day in the life videos for video game designers. And we got to watch that. It was really cool. And then he illustrated his dream job below. So that is basically what this looks like. That is what you're going to be doing in a day with moving beyond the page. Okay. And some of the other things that we did, we, um, made different lists of jobs from this book. And let's see, let me show you. So this little book, it has different um, jobs you can do and it tells you how much you're going to earn. So we kind of went through and talked about like, was that a fair earning for that job and that kind of thing. Um, we did different things with money this week um, where he was just like counting out different ways to pay someone and uh, we were figuring up change. It was pretty much a review for him, but it was still fun. Um, we did, like I said, we did the weekly budget. Um, let's see what else did we do. Let's see. Um, so we also... 
I think that was pretty much it for the first week because the first week we only did three days, three lessons. So that was it for economic cycles. And then in here, in the language arts, let's go through. These are some of the sheets that, like I said, we didn't do. We just discussed. Okay, so getting to lesson three. Again, we had our reading to do and our questions to answer. And then there was this Dear Diary activity where um, we just, we talked about how the different characters felt from their point of view. And then the last lesson that we did for the week was a day in the city where the main character took the kids through Paris. Um, the setting is during Christmas time. So it was really cool. We got to watch some different videos on YouTube about Christmas in France and things like that. Um, we got to talk about giving. This was the day that we did the list of ideas for things that you could do to help someone who is maybe in a difficult economic situation. And um, another thing I want to mention that I didn't is that Moving Beyond the Page actually has internet links, kind of like Usborne. So if there's these little links here, you can go to Moving Beyond the Page and go to the unit and lesson that you're on and use the links. So sometimes it's videos, sometimes it's just different um, websites to do some research and that kind of thing. So I thought that was really cool. And we did also a Venn diagram on the difference, um, different traditions for Christmas, for France, and for America. So that was really fun to get to see some of the different traditions that they have in France that we don't have here or that are different here. Um, so we thought that was fun. So that was pretty much our week with Moving Beyond the Page. We are really enjoying this curriculum so far. And honestly, I'm excited to do it every day. So that's a big plus. And my son's been excited to do it every day as well. So that is our first week with Moving Beyond the Page. I know this video is super long um, because I had to explain kind of how it worked for the first like 10 minutes. So hopefully my updates won't be this long in the future. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, just um, comment down below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye.